Hey guys, I'm sure coming out today, Ray Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. I'm glad to have you here. Send us some positive vibes your way today. We are looking at the new Fragment Summon Champion. Odds are you probably already heard the news. If not, he's coming to the game this Thursday, August 31st. Again, a Fragment Summon Champion. I usually try to go for all the Fragment Summons. I find them a lot easier to go for than the Fusions, personally. So I'll be going for this champion, but you may want to think twice. I am not advising him as a must-fuse or must-fragment uh, for players out out there in today's video we're going to quickly talk about why but first let's review his kit actually before we do that stratego anybody play this this board game man some of the best times in my childhood was playing stratego with uh my dad right stratego am i saying it right i don't know it's one of those things especially before the internet you could just pronounce something wrong your whole life and never realize as long as your circle of friends pronounce it the same way as you kind of like raid shadow legends here uh anyway let's get into this dude's kit let me know if there are any fans of the board game though that was my jam back in the day so first of all a legendary defense high elf champion magic affinity you can see aesthetically he looks pretty cool i like the i like the aesthetics behind this champion uh, double slash on the A1 is obviously a two-time hitter. Each hit with a 50% chance of placing a provoke. When counterattacking, the chance will increase to 50, make it 65. Not a bad provoke option for an A1 for Hydra specifically. Uh, Hindrance's A2 ability can be booked down to three-turn cooldown. AoE, 100% chance of decreasing the duration of all enemy buffs by one turn. Also 100% chance of placing a decreased speed for two turns. Listen, decreased speed on a three-turn cooldown is is not as special as it used to be, to be honest with you guys. There's a lot of champions, namely Vizix, the Unbowed, who everybody gets eventually that has this ability. Uh, granted, she's not removing or, or reducing the terms of a, a buff, uh, but I don't think that pushes it over the top as like a, a must-have ability uh, on most accounts out there. More on that, though, in a bit. Flawless, a Flawless Strategium is an ally protect on all allies, except this champion for two turns. Increased defense on all allies for two turns. Uh, so so this ability is on a four turn cooldown it can be booked down to a four turn cooldown so we don't love it on a four turn to be honest with you but let's keep reading we have a counter attack on this champion for two turns then places a shield on this champion for two turns proportional to his defense protect the troops is his passive Whenever this champion is attacked, heals himself by 1% for each 500 defense this champion has. Heals all other allies under ally protection buffs placed by this champion by 30% of this skill's initial heal. Okay, so we'll have to see. It's kind of one of those heals that I doesn't it doesn't blow me away on that passive, but who knows? It could surprise me. I've been surprised before. I want to see it in action before I judge too harshly. Uh, but overall, what do you think of this kit? I have to be real. For a progression uh, account, it's not the worst kit in the world. I'm not here to just like take a, a massive dump all over this dude, right? I think that he he's he's serviceable, but he definitely does not blow me away. For a few reasons. Number one is when we talk about Hydra, right? Uh, I hate the counterattack, man. The last thing that you want on Hydra Clan Boss is ally protection and counterattack. Counterattack specifically, right? I don't want that there. I would feel so much better about this champion if the counterattack was protected. I feel like, kind of like a Helicath to some extent with the block damage, right? I feel like it's kind of a crapshoot bringing a champion with a buff like this into a Hydra Clan boss because if it's stolen the counterattack and the ally protect, it can be a real pain, right? Uh, moreover, we mentioned Vizix as well, and... I'm a huge fan of Vizix. I might do a video on her. I don't know if I should do an updated video, but I just unlocked her on my mini account. And she's made a big impact, man. She's so much better. Remember when she used to suck really, really bad? They give her a big buff. She's got an AoE decrease speed, ally protect on a three turn, AoE provoke on a three turn, uh, shield on herself, turn meter on the A1. I mean... I think objectively, they're they're quite different kits in a lot of ways too, but I would much rather have Vizix and, and, and everybody gets her eventually for free. So listen, I mean, and let's, let's look at uh, it's just like a random ally protect champion. Let's look at Versalf the Grim, right? Look at his A3. He's got the big version of increased defense and ally protect on a three turn cooldown, you know, instead of a four turn cooldown. Granted, doesn't have that same passive synergy uh, with the healing there. But I mean, if it was a three turn cooldown, at least you could say, okay, you're going to get a lot of survivability value progression wise in a bunch of different areas. I do think that it being on a four turn cooldown, 
Uh, even despite that cool kind of passive heal synergy, I think that it's it's just not that great of it. It doesn't blow me away, okay? Again, I think he's a, like a decent champion. You can definitely get some value, especially if you're new to the game or maybe a few months in, maybe you don't have Vizix yet. It might be worth it, but you know, you're still going to have to book him out and then eventually you're going to get better options at a lot of that stuff. And, and let's be real, sometimes you can get burnout on these fragment summons and fusions. It feels like they're throwing him at us like every other week now. Certainly, not really, but maybe every other month, right? It seems like a lot more often than we used to. So I guess I wanted to just, especially for newer players out there, I kind of wanted to put this video out, A, highlighting the champion, not trash, but definitely a pass, I feel like, for you if you're A, burnt out, B, already have Vizix or similar options out there, uh, even the AoE decrease speed. There's plenty of champions that bring that and more to the table, you know? I mean, granted, he's a lot squishier. He's not defense-based, but, you know, there's even epics with an AoE, decreased speed, big, big version on a three-turn cooldown, such as Tuok, the Wanderer, or even another login champion that we get for free in Tanix, right? She has on her A2 an AoE, decreased speed, uh, as long as it's critical on all enemies, right? On the three-turn cooldown. So, I just don't think the AoE, decreased speed is that special anymore. Uh, there's plenty of free champions that you get that have that so feel free to skip on this one guys like I always say here on the channel never ever ever feel pressured to go for any fragment summon or any fusion in this game if you're kind of like me and you know kind of have that gotta collect them all mentality and you might as well because fragment summons aren't a massive inconvenience then sure go ahead and go for it you know uh he might help you out in some areas uh especially again progression wise uh i think that's all the points that i want to make we don't need to make this video any longer but i will say a lot of feedback on my video of Sun Wukong yesterday. A lot of you guys in the comments saying that you think he's incredible as well. You agree with me. And a lot of people also saying that, dude, Ash, you're way overstating this champion. A lot of people thinking that he's not that great. Uh, so I'm standing by my, my initial take last night. Listen, I think he's a beast. Do I think he's like an S tier champion? No, certainly not. He's more niche. He's like arena focus, but he can help you out in other areas. We talked about that in length in yesterday's video. But I will say that I think he's really awesome, especially for new players. I mean, for everybody, right? I think most people can get utility out of this monkey. And, uh, and a lot of people, just remember, a lot of people hated Ninja when he came out. They, they thought he was trash. A lot of videos out there. I'm not sure if they've been deleted now. Not on this channel. But saying he was a trash champion, same thing with UDK. A lot of people saying he was he was trash. I think kind of the same thing with Sun Wukong, as maybe not necessarily as used as Ninja and and UDK. But I think that he's a champion that people who are hating on him early on, I think they're sleeping on his total potential. I think he'll be used a lot uh, when we look back in six months. Anyway, guys, let me know how you feel. Much love. Are you going for the fragment summon? Or are you skipping? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, take care, guys.